this is it. I don't want to do anything else. This is what I want to do from 10 years old, 9 years old. Before I'm a pinstriper, before I'm a, an artist, before I'm anything else, I always I want to be known as a sign painter. That's my true love: is, is to paint letters and lay them out, and really to be able to stand back and you know when you pull a nice S, there's something to be said about it. You get into some fancier letter styles and start getting some shadows and some bevels and mixing the paint and the smell of the paint and the, the thinners and getting it on your hand and getting it on your clothes, you know. And, if you get vinyl on your pants, it don't mean nothing, you know, but if you get paint on there, it's like it reminds you of a job you did. It's like, yeah, I know, I remember that job that I did because I was wiping it off. And you recollect a lot of the work you were doing. I do everything from traditional sign painting to fabricating illuminated signs. Do a lot of electrical work, uh, so I, I got into doing that. Um, you know, truck and uh, vans, uh, painting, lettering. There's a lot of uh, installs and there can be some sweating and some nicked fingers and some grinding and that, but it's part of it all. You know there's gonna be a good result in the end. My biggest thing is that the customer's happy. They're friends of mine. We create a bit of a bond. I, I always want them to be happy no matter what. I don't care about me and, and the money and all that, as long as they get what they wanted. Um, there's been times when we'll be talking and I'll say, is it okay, you know, because sometimes they're not quite sure. Well, I'll wipe it off. I don't care. I'm not offended by it. I'm offended if we don't wipe it off and if, and if you leave unhappy. So I'm doing a sign for business. I want them to be proud of it, you know, when they pull up to their business, you know, I want them to be look at it and say, hey, yeah, I got a good looking place and the sign is part of it. I grew up with art and drawing and I drew on every wall in the house and got in trouble for it, you know, when I'm growing up and it's, it's hands on and that's where I came from. My grandpa was a carpenter and I learned young to help him in the shop a little bit. You get a sense of pride out of doing stuff with your hands. That's where I started uh, as a kid, doodling and always drawing and always getting in trouble in school. I'd spend more time drawing artwork on the back of an exam than actually doing the exam, you know, so I, I failed my share of exams. <laughs> But I always pass the courses somehow. <laughs> Cut to high school, I excelled at art and by grade 11 I ended up transferring to another school because it was known for its art program. So finally my fifth year I took nothing but art classes. I changed my homeroom down to there. I never saw any other part of the school. I never ventured anywhere other than the art department. Somebody came in uh, during the winter time um, asking about the uh, if somebody was willing to come to paint some Christmas windows. I remember he gave me orange, that was what I started with, and that was my first dabble into it. My buddy Keith and I, we would put our little flair into these caricatures, you know. I'll never forget it, I'll, you know, it's just... And, and for whatever reason, it was just fun being out in the public. The head of the art department in college pulled me aside one day and said, you know, uh, uh, Butch, who used to go to uh, school here, he's got a sign shop in town and he's looking for a shop boy. I had already knocked on some doors and everybody kicked me to the curb and didn't want to talk to me and he said, yeah, sure, I'll take you on. And so I went and hung out in Butch's shop and, you know, leaned over his shoulder and stayed out of the way as best I could and 
learned off of him. And if I could tell anybody that's ever starting, ever wants to get into it, you know, just be proud of what you do and never give up and practice and pay attention to uh, the old guys out there that know what they're talking about and just don't give them any back talk. <laughs> Whatever I'm doing, I'm in another world. I just see it, I feel it, and the, it just speaks to me. I hate the term organic, but it feels like it's organic, you know? It just, it just evolves. It's still evolving. I'm still trying to get better at it, you know, doing pencil sketching. I could never do that 30 years ago or 20, 10 years ago I couldn't do it. But I've learned to be patient, pay attention to the detail, watch other people, learn from other people. I'm constantly just trying to look at other People that I look up to pay attention to what they're doing and what is it that they've done that attracts me to it. We all have our own style and our own feel for it. And knowing color theory is uh, is a key. So I, I try to uh, always keep that in mind when it comes to pinstriping. You know, I can't do two jobs the same. It just depends on that day. It depends on what music I'm listening to, the mood I'm in. I just start to see something, especially if I'm doing a car or a truck, you know, I gotta look at the body lines. The car has to speak to me kind of thing, and you start to visualize something, and you, and you get a flow, you, get, you start to get an idea of what would look good in this area. The guy's put chrome wheels on it, or he's put a unique uh, mirror. This is one more unique aspect to it, and you don't want it to be the number one thing. Um, it's just all part of the package. But a lot of times they, they do just let me run with what I think is good, you know, and, and they'll say, and that's my favorite thing to hear is, hey, you're the artist, you do what you think is right. I was like, thank you, <laughs> you know, and that's the way it should be. I'm very proud and, and thankful that they allow me to have hands in on their little baby. They just wouldn't allow anybody to do that. And I know I've had guys come to me and say, oh, I've had so-and-so offer to do it. And I said, no, no, I'm gonna get Dano. I want Dano, you know, to do it. And, and that really, you know, that hits me right here. I had a guy with a Harley, he wanted me to stripe it. And I said, you don't need any striping on that. And he couldn't figure that out. And he's going, why? And I said, it's a beautiful bike. You don't need it. It's, you know, there's, you know, not much room sometimes on some bikes to, to do anything. And, he says, you really want me to do it? I'll take your money, fine. I says, but this bike doesn't need it. I wouldn't do it if it was my bike. And uh, he's like, oh, okay, thanks. I try and talk people out of doing too much. I'm a technical person. You know, that's a lot of this is, I find it more technical. The symmetry of it, there's a lot of, well, I lay it out with a grid first, you know, and that helps me to, uh, to get that symmetry. Like when I'm designing something like this, you know, th there's a flow to it. It, it, does, it does, you know, there's a focal point. It, it's got a flow. It, it's just. You know, your eye has got to travel, it's got to follow from one point to the next and, and, and but not bounce around all or not know where to look. You've really got to create that illusion and it's got to happen pretty quick. It's like in advertising and doing signs, you know, you've only got seconds to read a sign. So you really have to get that message across and I think with pinstriping, the same thing. There's a beauty about it, but you know, it's like looking at a beautiful girl, you know, it's boom, it's right there. And, but what is it? Well, I don't know, there's just something about it, you know, and there, there's just that thing that, uh, that that's kind of, it's hidden, but, it, but it's right in your face, too. Um, even this guy, when I did this one, this line in here in particular, I had it actually arcing the opposite way. And I stood back at it and I was like, nah, that, 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 that's not right. I, I, I made a mistake. So I had to go in, after I had all these other lines already painted, and I had to go in with the rag and, and wipe away and clean away all in between and then retouch up, you know, the other, the, the vertical lines. And then I went in and cut those lines the opposite way. And then it was like, yeah, that worked. Something I've learned through pinstriping is, is knowing when to walk away. And you get that little voice in the back of your head, you know, as soon as you hear it, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm done and walk away. You're always striving for perfection, no matter what. That'll never leave me. I'm always gonna just push, push, push. And I, I'm just thankful that people allow me to do what I love to do. I mean, I've never worked a day in my life. This is awesome stuff, you know? And I get up every day and I get to do it all over again.